In continuation to our lecture, now we will talk about case 2, which is over damping. Remember that is the case where c square is greater than 4 m k, and if you see that roots lambda 1 and 2 is minus c plus minus under root c square minus 4 m k by 2 m. So, if c square is greater than 4 m k, then naturally this is positive, no complex part. Now, you could see that both lambda 1 and lambda 2 will be negative. Is it clear or not? First term you see lambda 1 minus c plus minus under root c square minus 4 m k. This c square minus 4 m k, since m k they are positive. So, this will be always less than c square or this root c square minus 4 m k is always less than c. Obvious, because something has been extracted out of c square. If this was 0, they would have been equal. So, naturally lambda 1 will be negative and lambda 2 also will be negative. This is an interesting point. Both lambda 1 lambda 2 will be negative. If c square is greater than 4 m k, no complex part. So, it is a very win-win situation. There will be damping fast. Okay? That is why it is over damping. So, if that is true, then x of t we can write as c 1 e to the power lambda 1 t plus c 2 e to the power lambda 2 t, because lambda 1 lambda 2 are negative and they are distinct. So, roots are, are distinct and negative. This is important. So, what do you see here now? What is x of t? x of t was a perturbed quantity. So, as time progresses, since lambda 1 and lambda 2 are negative, so naturally there will be decay, but will there be oscillation? No, there will not be any oscillation. So, thus variation will be typically something like this. If it is x of t and time, it may vary something like this. It will come to the equilibrium, something like this. So, you see here, there will not be any oscillation, lambda 1 negative, lambda 2 negative. So, remember this is again a mass spring damper system, but no oscillation. What is the trick? The message is, if you can select damping such a way, high damping such a way that it is greater than 4 into mass into k stiffness constant, then there will not be any oscillation. So, designer has the liberty. If he wants a over damped system, so he will select the c such a way, high value of c such a way the disturbed quantity goes like this, perturbed quantity goes like this. That is very important. So, this also demystify that mass spring damper system does not necessarily mean oscillatory system. Correct? And a designer has so much of liberty, depending upon what sort of a response he wants, he has to select the value of c, m and k. Is it clear? Okay. Now, under damping over, over damping is just over. Now, what comes to your mind? It is obvious. You will be more interested in the boundary between under damping and over damping, and that is our case 3. That is called critical damping. Before I come to this, let me take you back to the physical situation. What did we realize? We realize that you have to select the value of c, m, and k to ensure or to get whatever you desire as an oscillatory response or a overdamped response. You have to select c, select mass, 
and select the value of stiffness. If I want to translate this to aircraft, C will be translated to C m q, which damping derivatives, K will be C m alpha. What I am discussing is, we know that if I want to get a particular type of response, let us say we want to over damp response, then C square should be very high compared to 4 m k or C should be very high compared to m k and this product. So, if I translate this to aircraft, C means my pitch damping derivative C m q and k means C m alpha and m could be i y y in longitudinal case. So, that is how we are building a relationship between the understanding through mass spring damper system to aircraft longitudinal motion. That is why we are spending so much time on this. Now, let us come to the critical damping case, case 3, where you know lambda 1, lambda 2 is minus c plus minus under root c square minus 4 m k by 2 m. For critical damping, you know that c square equal to 4 m k, this is critical damping. And you could understand if c square is less than 4 m k, it is under damping, c square greater than 4 m k, it is over damping. So, c square equal to 4 m k is the boundary which separates under damping and over damping, and this is also termed as critical damping. And you could see here it has a roots, it has roots which are repetitive in nature, and they are minus c by 2 m, minus c by 2 m, and you know if you, the solution for this roots for this differential equation, because it has a repetitive roots. So, we will write x of t as e to the power minus c by 2 m t into c 1 plus c 2 into t. Carefully observe this. One can think of as time is increasing, this may diverge, but See here, this is exponential. So, this decay will be faster compared to the increase because of time. So, this also will decay very fast. In fact, you will see that this response is the fastest response among the all the three. It takes shorter time to come back to the equilibrium. Okay. We will see that, and uh, it is also said that it is the fastest return of the system. is non oscillatory. So, what is the message? Message is if damping C is less than C corresponding to this critical damping, then it will be under damp case. If C is more than this critical damping, it will be over damp case. And third thing, the fastest return of the system in a non oscillatory mode if the damping C value is equal to the C critical. Okay. So, this demands that we need to know a little bit of more on C critical and we will try to understand what is this C critical means. We will also try to understand what is natural frequency of the system. Right. Remember, we define omega d damped frequency as under root C square minus 4 m k by 2 m and if c equal to 0, omega d is nothing but under root k by m. If I put c equal to 0, I can show that omega d is equal to this and this is nothing but natural frequency. So, when I talk about natural frequency, I am talking about a case when there is no damping. Clear? Now, if I try to give a statement on natural frequency, which is here, natural frequency, I will define natural frequency is the frequency at with which a system will oscillate if damping is 0. So, whenever I think of natural frequency, keep back of your mind C is 0, no damping. 
the generally there is a lot of confusion and people will go on talking about damp frequency, but actually it is a natural frequency. Sometimes natural frequency talked about damp frequency. So, whenever talking natural frequency, no damping, okay? right. This should be clear to you and damping ratio is another term will come, you will see damping ratio. This is also very important thing to understand. Let me erase this part. It is actually ratio of actual damping by critical damping. Denoted by zero. Okay, actual damping by critical. You can see here, if this ratio zeta is more than one, that means what? That means this system will behave like a over damped case, right? This will be over damped, and no oscillation. If zeta is less than one. That is, damping, actual damping is less than critical damping, it is the under damping. Okay. Under damping case, so there will be oscillation. And of course, it goes without saying if zeta equal to 1, again there will not be any oscillation and it will have a fastest return, no oscillation and fastest return to equilibrium. So, this is important, this ratio, damping ratio has drawn a lot of importance and that is why there is a need to understand this ratio and the meaning of this magnitude. Okay. So, let us see, if I further go into this, I put actual damping is C and critical damping, you know it is 2 root of m k. Where from it has come? Because C square equal to 4 m k for critical damping. So, C is equal to 2 root m k if I take the square root and we have assumed that m k c all are positive. So, that as a ratio is C actual and the critical damping case. So, this is nothing but zeta. Okay. Now, let us see. We also know omega n is under root k by m. We will do some trick. You will see this will be useful. We may use another one lecture of 20 25 minutes talking about second order system at the most, then we will dash into aircraft. But uh, it is required that you understand these things. At least you might have done this thing long back, okay? but try to understand and get the physics out of it. Okay? So, C by 2 m k is zeta and omega n equal to under root k by m. So, if I now see m d square x by d t square plus c d x by d t, which is our equation of motion for a mass spring system equal to f of t equal to 0 for free response. Please understand, I have used this term equation of motion. This when I write m d square x by d t square plus c d x by d t plus k of x, it has come from that force balance, right? It was first law. So, this is will be referred as the equation of motion. If I do that, then I can write this as m by k d square x by d t square plus c by k d x by d t plus x is equal to 0 for free response. And you also know m by k is nothing but 1 by omega n square. Then question comes, what is c by k? We want to know what is the value of c by k okay? and we will use it c by 2 m k equal to zeta and we know omega n equal to k by m, right? So, we can easily see that 
c by 2 root m k is equal to c by 2 root for m I write k by omega n square into k, because we know omega n equal to k by m. So, for m it is that expression I am using here, omega n equal to under root k by m. Okay. Let us not forget that. So, this implies C is equal to, of course, this is okay. This is nothing but zeta by definition. So, if I manipulate this, I get C is equal to 2 zeta k by omega n. Okay. And what is our aim? Our aim is C by k. So, C by k will be 2 zeta omega n. This is important. Right? So, what do you have got? m by k as 1 by omega n square and c by k as 2 zeta by omega n. Now, I substitute it here to get the final equation. So, what will happen? So, if I substitute here, this equation will become d square x by d t square plus 2 zeta omega n d x by d t plus omega n square x is equal to 0. This is a equation of motion for free response using zeta and omega n. So, this is equation of motion for what? For free response using zeta and omega n. And most of our analysis will be using this form. So, what we are doing so far? Please understand. We realize one thing that if we want to understand the dynamics of an airplane, we need to understand dynamics of mass spring damper system. Why? Because there is a stiffness type at para a parameter or attribute of an airplane, which comes through C m alpha static stability. There is a damping type attribute which comes through pitch damping C m q. It also comes in the other plane also like in lateral and directional also it comes. This is one. Second thing we understood that for a mass spring damper system, depending upon the roots, depending upon the selection of system variable, you can control the, you can guide the response or transient. These are important because after all, Finally, we will be studying all these dynamic stability to analyze the handling quality of the airplane. So, we know that if we, whether I want to design over dam system, I will design a critical dam system or an under dam system or depending upon that, I can choose those variables, the system variables. Now, to know more about it in terms of mathematical modeling, we thought of converting this equation of motion into a form where you use damping ratio and natural frequency. These two are very important parameters when you try to evaluate handling qualities. And we, we define damping ratio as the ratio of actual damping to critical damping and natural frequency as the frequency of oscillation when damping is 0. Most important part is why from this sort of a form to this? Because we will see that zeta omega n and zeta into omega n, they will be exhaustively used to define the handling requirements, handling quality requirements. So, whatever you understood here, although through mass spring damper system, we will have one more lecture on this, that is all, maybe 20, 25 minutes. You will find, once you master this, your understanding of dynamic stability becomes simpler. Those who go for a shortcut, they do not understand this, they try to understand the equation of the aircraft, they always complain. Oh, highly mathematical, very complex. It is neither highly mathematical nor complex. It is a physics based as long as you understand mass spring damper system. I am sure we will not commit that mistake, but not understanding this. Any problem, put up question in the forum. Thank you very much.